عليكم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Um, I think that what we we got this uh, in this session with uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Yasser Qadi and uh, 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 Professor uh, Jasser Auda is very much. It's quite interesting because I think it's very much a complementary. Uh, approach that we had two complementary approaches uh, with a kind of introduction and then some of the issues that we have to deal with uh, when it comes to understanding Sharia and to, come to understand Mahas, the Sharia, the objectives. And I think that I'm not going to repeat all what was said because I agree with uh, almost all what was said. We might have different interpretation and understanding, but the framework, the, the, the reference, it's quite the same. Now, my main point here is to come from, from where, what was done and said and promoted by the classical tradition that we have to study, that it's very important to understand if we want to deal with contemporary challenges. So, okay, what should we do out of this? In which way we have to understand that in our situation? And for, of course, here we are talking, and we are in Washington, in a Western country, in the United States, and it's quite interesting not only to know the framework, but now from the framework to our life, how do we deal with this, and what is our responsibility? Because once again, this knowledge, it's basic knowledge. All what you heard here is something that at least you need, you need to take some time to read about it and to get the basic uh, principles. Because very often, and, and you know, you, you have a very strong movement here in this country, the uh, anti-Sharia uh, bill, they are very much targeting words. And, and when we were in California recently, they were demonstrating in front of the, the hotel, saying we don't want Sharia in this country, Sharia is alien to our society. And when I sat with some of our brothers and sisters, just to know, I wanted to understand which was their answers to this. And I was surprised to see that the level of the answer I'm sorry to say, it's sometimes as simplistic as the level of the attack. So how are you going to change the mentality in your society if you don't get the understanding of who you are and you are attacked in your reference and you don't know how to, to respond? It means that you have a double responsibility as ordinary Muslims. We're not talking about ulama, we're not talking about scholars, we're not talking about leaders, we're talking about ordinary Muslims is to do two things. First, to get the right understanding of your terminology, meaning by this, sometimes from Arabic to Arabic, sometimes we can see that even if you speak Arabic, it doesn't mean that you understand the terminology you are using. So, a, a deep understanding of the concept, and then if you speak English and you have in this country to have a good comment of your language, you have to speak English and to translate the Islamic terminology in English with all the dimensions, not a literal uh, uh, translation, but a substantive with all the dimensions. And Sharia is many things. Even with among scholars, we don't agree on the definition of Sharia. So at least we need to get an understanding of these multiple dimensions that are so important for us. So this is something that is your responsibility. And not only you need to do this, but then you also need to understand the logic of the people who are attacking you. What do they want to say? What do they want to show? Where do, we want to, they, do they want to put you in the whole landscape? It's coming from somewhere. The attacks are coming from somewhere. The people have an agenda. It's not only because they don't like Islam and they don't like Muslims. They have a specific agenda. So you need to understand and you know the verse was quoted by uh, Professor Jasser when it comes to uh, uh, prepare to your enemy the means that are necessary to respond. At the time of the Prophet we were talking about verses, now your mind is one of your, the means that you have to use. Be ready. Intellectually ready to respond. So it means that there is an intellectual jihad here at the starting point of our discussion where we are not equipped. So all what you got today as an introduction to the topic is something that you have not only to get now with one hour session. You take this, you go back home, you take some articles, you start reading books and you shape something which is the framework through which you have to deal with your society by understanding first your reference.
Now, if you come to this, and what was said is very much about the methodology that was said. We said something which is important, and I want to start from here to come to this understanding of our reality in, the, in, in, in our society. Because what is important with theory is the way you use theory to be practically efficient. This is the very meaning of a theory, is how are you going from the theory to be practically efficient in your society? Are we or are we not efficient when it comes to our references? And there is here, in all what we heard today, between the rules and ahkam, and the objective, the mafaz, the the sharia, between the rules and the objective, there is something that we cannot avoid. In order for you to connect the rules with the objectives, you need the mind, the intellect. And the intellect to be connecting the two need the understanding. No way for you to understand the meaning, the rules, if you don't understand the, the ends, the goals. So there is something which is a factor which is add to knowledge, the understanding. And with the understanding, you will get the right knowledge, the right knowledge of the principles. So this is something which is an intellectual uh, uh, first step in our understanding of our reference. So it's something that we have to start with as Muslims. Now, what also was said and has to be repeated, the Muslim scholars, you know, we were referring to Jouaini and Mohammed al Ghazali, uh, al Shatibi, Qadhafi, these scholars who were dealing with al Maqas. In fact, they didn't find the Maqas straight away reading the Quran. This is a human endeavor extracting from the Quran the principles based on what Shir Yasser said, which is very important, is based on the really the right understanding, and this is also repeated, was also repeated by uh, Professor Chaser, by the way it's also a share. So the point here, I can say it's So anyway, so it's important here to understand that it's extracted by human beings, by scholars, and it's based on what? First, on the rules, and there is an interaction between the rules and the objectives. You have a right understanding of the rules when you understand the objectives, justice, dignity, and all this, and you have a right understanding of the objectives if these objectives are not contradicting the rules. So it's a two-way process, and this is the way the scholars did it. But they did this with a specific understanding in the text, in a specific period of time, trying to come with a, a synthesis. Does it mean that it's absolute? You are not going to talk about maybe new objectives, maybe a better understanding of what are the priorities, because what is important is depending on the space and depending on the time, sometimes the priorities are going to change. Who is going to tell you this? The Quran? No, you understand the principles coming from the Quran in the context within which you live. So, you cannot avoid it. You have to be intellectually committed to get the right understanding of what has to be implemented, knowing that things are immutable and they are not going to change. If the habits are not going to change, then the mutawayyirat could change and the priorities sometimes could change. So this is something which has to do with an intellectual uh, attempt by scholars to come with the framework and us today, living with new challenges in a very complex world, we have to reassess, not by destroying, not by ignoring, but reassessing and maybe reconsidering the priorities, which are the first things we have to achieve in our society. So this is something which is coming from all our discussion when it comes to a scholarly approach uh, in, in the whole, the whole uh, uh, dimension. Now, as I said, what is pushing us to reassess the way we are implementing some of the ahkam in, for example, social affairs is going to be based on the, the evolution of time and the new challenges, of course, cultures, the cultures are different and we have to adapt and to understand the cultures in order to get it right. Having said that, now let us come to something which is a very dynamic uh, concept. Sharia is very dynamic, and as I said at the beginning, we don't agree with the definition, and you have many definitions. Of course, if you are a faqih, a faqih who is dealing with the rules and very much 
thinking about how do we implement the rules in our world, very often the reduction of Sharia would be Sharia, uh, uh, which is Islamic law. But in fact, if you come to the term, the, the etymology and the, the roots and the very understanding of Sharia, it's a path, it's a way towards faithfulness. And by the way, very often we say it's the Islamic way of life. And I have I want to be wider than this because Sharia is a way of life and I agree with this but in fact it's a concept and a way of life and death not only life because the way we look at life is also the way we are defining everything which has to do with the end of life the very understanding of Sharia that we are coming back to the source is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un which means very much something which has to do send me your concept of death and I will get the deep concept and way of life Allahumma dhakirna bil mawti kulli sa'a what does it mean? why the Prophet is asking Allah remember, remind us with our death every hour why? Because by thinking about our death, the concept of death, we have this light that is giving meaning to our life. And it's important to get it in this way. And you will see that all the great philosophers, all the great spiritualities, they are always, always talking about a certain concept of death. And we have to put it within. Don't put death outside life. Death is the center of the way you look at life. It's the center, it's an axis, it's the light, it's the way you deal at the end of the day. The end is telling you the way you deal with the one. The end of your life is telling you the way you deal with it. Ah, the song. This is something that has to do with Sharia, it's a path, and you have to add to this that it's uh, the way towards peacefulness is in which way we are going to implement the objectives. And as it's dynamic, as it's a path, as we have to be very strict with the rules, it's also rules, but it's a path towards objectives, meaning it's the way we look at our life and our death. There is something here that we have to add, which there will be no implementation of Sharia without a deep understanding of Jihad. Get me right. And why I'm saying this? I'm saying I'm doing this on purpose. You know why? Because in our countries now, in the West, there are two words that are now dirty words. Don't talk about Sharia and don't talk about Jihad. And what I'm telling you now, there is no true deep faithfulness to Islam without understanding that in order to implement Sharia, which means the path towards faithfulness, a deep understanding of death, you have to come to a deep understanding of jihad. No, no, why, why are you laughing? You are misleading the people. So a deep understanding of jihad is what? Is the way you are reforming, and this is why we are from life. We are in this life. means that this worship is to do what? Is to purify ourselves, to reform our society, to be a believer means purify yourself and change the world. This is it. In the name of what? This way towards faithfulness, the Sharia. So the jihad will be resisting what is bad, reforming to what is good. So there is no way to achieve the objectives if we are not clear on it's going to be strife, it's going to be jihad, it's going to be striving, it's going to be education, it's going to be commitment, it's going to be engagement. No way. Laziness, no fix. It doesn't match. It doesn't match. So you have to understand that in order to implement the objectives and to be clear with the rules, you have to go towards something which has to do with the and nafs, jihad and nafs, and jihad, intellectual jihad, and the first occurrence of jihad in the Quran. Meaning an intellectual jihad by the means of the Quran. So we have to understand this. 
And jihad has nothing to do with holy war, has nothing to do. No, in fact, jihad is the way we struggle in order to get peace. It's the, it's the way towards peace, not the way towards war. But if you are not clear on this, if us, we don't know what it means, anyone is going to criticize us and we don't know what to answer. It's the opposite. Not the holy war, but the, a struggle in order to get inner and collective peace. This is why we are on earth. This is Sharia. No, 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 try just together. Think about it. You know what you should do sometimes is just to write some good ideas in other instead of clapping. Anyway, so now this is something which is important. It, it's 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 the relationship between Sharia as a dynamic path, as a, 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 a set of rules and principles that we are trying to implement in order here to be able to be faithful to our uh, our religion. Now, third dimension. The scholars that were mentioned and, and what uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Yasser uh, did and it was repeated and, and uh, dimensions were added by uh, uh, Professor Yasser is very much about the classical interpretation and all this is right, you know, uh, one of my teachers and scholars for me when I started working on this is very much a Shatibi. It's Shatibi which, well, you know, he was not the first one, but he had the capacity to, to synthesize the whole dimension of, you know, the horizontal dimension, the vertical dimension. It was before him, as I said, the Juwaini and Muhammad al Hazal started the process, but he came with something which was very, very uh, 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 clear as to the dimension. And he was categorizing the nafs, the deen, and nafs and folders. Now, all this is a human extraction, and it's important. But if you come to a scholar in the 14th century, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, and it's very interesting to see that it's coming from Ibn Taymiyyah, and not coming from, you know, coming from someone who is perceived because he is misread and not very much understood sometimes by its own uh, followers, is he was saying that in all this framework, there is something which is missing in the Mabaz, in the Sharia, the way they were put, which is the inner dimension. That in fact in Islam there are objectives that are coming from inside, which is inner peace, that's geared in nafs, which is very important. Of course you can say it's already in a deen, but he was saying be careful, it's not because it's in a deen that we cannot stress a dimension which is important. One of the objectives of Sharia is inner peace. And we should not dismiss the point today, you know why? Look at our situation in, in our industrialized society. Some of our brothers and sisters are so much obsessed with external law, legislation, halal haram, but they are not very much, not enough concerned and not enough focusing on something which is another dimension is that at the end of the day, if you say la ilaha illallah, it's what you want to get is inner peace. Salamatimness. I want to feel God, good with God. I want peace. يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية satisfied and full of satisfaction and God is satisfied with you this is what I want at the end of the day the meaning of my life it's coming from this when Allah is saying after my death يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة come this is the meaning of the concept of life coming back to our life and this is why it might be that sometimes with new challenges we rethink the categories the categorization could change and today for example listen to what is said uh, by all the sociologists and, and uh, in human sciences and i very much agree with some you know we have some thinkers in the west say okay if we carry on like this the way we deal with the environment means that we are ready to destroy the world, meaning we are going to destroy human life. So, what is the take of the Muslims and Islam in anything which has to do with protecting the creation, protecting the environment, protecting nature? Is it not an objective in itself that we have to think about? My concern here is that in the classical literature, it was not there because it was not the challenge of that time. Now it's a challenge of our time. That we have to put it at the highest level. That in Islam, we protect life, 
that we protect nature and we protect peace because peace is also peace with God, peace with ourselves, peace with nature. We are not here to master nature. We, have, we are here to reconcile ourselves with the creator of nature by respecting nature. So this is a very important message that when it comes to our understanding of the dynamic from within the Sharia, we can reassess the categories. And in the book, Radical Reform, I try to push in that direction by saying there are fields that now we have to, 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 to get at something which is important on an intimate level to be able to put this as a priority inner peace today is important. And I'm saying this because I'm dealing, and I've been dealing as all our scholars have been dealing with this community over the last 30 years. And I, what, what I can tell you is that my problem is not only for the Muslims to understand what is halal and what is haram. One of the main problems that I have when I deal with Muslims is the lack of inner peace, the lack of well-being, the lack of self-confidence, the lack of trust, the lack of dignity, the lack of being proud of being Muslim part by saying it. I remember when I came here uh, a few years ago at Easter Convention, some people had a, a statement, proud to be a Muslim. I'm sorry, it's not something that you put on your heart. It's something that you have in your heart and you don't need to put it on your heart if it's there. Yes, which has to do with confidence. And this is what we have to deal with. This is something that we have to see. The spiritual, the power of the spirituality. And we have to put it as a priority today in our consumerist industrialized society. Why am I saying this? Because this is the way to reconcile Sharia with meaning. Not only to pray as we see the Prophet says, we have to pray to ourselves, but now we pray for a reason. In order to remember Allah. And what does it mean to remember Allah? Tell me, what does it mean? You just say, Allah, what's that? You remember Allah? Why? What is the very meaning of remembrance? Is to get that peace. Is to be at peace with Him. And you feel that you have a good prayer when at the end you have the, 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 the sentiment. You feel that you are communicating with Him. At peace. A riddle. That I accept. That I feel good. Isn't it? So this is why, by coming with this understanding that you focus on some new categories because these are the challenges of our time. We are always within Sharia, but we reassess the priorities by doing something which was said by, by Sheikh Yassi, which is very important. We never, never, in order to promote the objectives, betray the principles and the rules. But we never, never, in order of the rules, forget the objectives and the meaning. It's a balance. It's always a balance. But balancing doesn't mean that we repeat what was said in the past. Balancing in the life of the present and the present challenges. This is what we should be. And this is why the Muslim minds and the Muslim scholars and the intellectuals and the ordinary Muslims should be much more creative when it comes to what are the challenges of our time when it comes to uh, this understanding. <coughs> Not only it's important at the, the personal level, the intimate level, it's important when it comes to dignity. Because uh, uh, this morning in our session, uh, uh, Professor Jasser was just reminding us with something which is very true. He said something that we have to repeat. It's not because something is halal that the way we do the halal is ethical. You understand? It could be halal in the way, for example, and he took the, the example of uh, the animals and slaughtering by saying, you know, Allah Akbar, Bismillah Allah Akbar, and that's it. But the way we treat the animals is not ethical. So and the, 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 the meat is halal, the way we treat the animals is not very ethical. And we have to reconcile the two. The ethical way we deal with things. I'm saying this because in our life sometimes there is ways of being... Uh, let me tell you something. I, I'm going to be quite blunt here. 
from coming to this country and just before this we have one of our brothers, an African American. I keep on repeating this and I will never stop repeating it. It's very halal what we are doing here. Inviting the Muslims coming from the same background in this very nice setting. We are, it's good. Is it ethical in the way we invite our brothers and sisters every time to forget the poor people who cannot enter? To have something where our African American brothers and sisters are not here? What we are doing is halal. You might have to think about being more ethical in gathering the people together. An ethical, an ethical stand on what should be done with our brothers and sisters, depending on the social status and the color. Because I'm sorry to tell you here that you are some people in this. Yes. So ten minutes. It's always to try to get the best of what they have to say. And I remember that when I was talking about being struggling for social justice, when the Salafi came and said, Tariq Ramadan is completely misleading the community. I said, okay, thank you. And he was saying, you know what, you can get this because he never starts his talk with the very understanding of Tawheed. In fact, in my mind, Tawheed is everywhere. But what he wanted is clearly start with Tawheed. And then it comes to this, and I, I started thinking about this, and when you come to our discussion on G, uh, uh, Sharia and Jihad and all this, I think that in that point, what they are saying is right. Never forget the access. And the access is at the end of the day, your way of life, and your concept of death is based on la ilaha illallah. And we have to stop this news. This is the landscape, this is the essence, this is the light. This is the light. That all what we are saying is la ilaha illallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah is the way Isa Prasad will But we have to come with this and understanding the principles that there are things that we are not sharing with others. Taskiyat in nafs. In the light of La ilaha illallah is going to be very specific for Muslims. We are not sharing this with Christians and Jews and Buddhists. It's very specific that we have a specific understanding of the skiyat in that, the purification of the self in the light of our relationship with Allah. He is one, there is no other God, and what He is asking us to do is to ponder over His names in order to get His names inside. Allah is essential. So this is the axis, this is the light. And we have principles and we have rules and the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of faith are ours. And I'm not going to move and we have to be very assertive. This is us. And anyone in the United States of America who is coming or everywhere telling, challenging this, they say, you are betraying the values of the country because this country is saying freedom of conscience, freedom of religion. So we are going to struggle for this. This is a jihad of independence and dignity. This is one. The second is to understand, and I have two points. The second, two other points, so I have three. So, the second point is about, is about the, the rules. And what is important when it comes to Sharia is our Sharia is not a closed frame of reference. If we come with the objective, dignity and justice and all this, principles, the light is clear, the The pillars of our faith and the pillars of our Islam are clear, they were repeated before, I'm not going to add to this. But now when it comes to maslahatiness, the ma'ruf, the cultural dimension, in Islam it's an open system. 
The first principle in Islam is permission. As long as you see people doing good, if it's not prohibited by religion, take it. Integrate it. But that is, what does it mean, integrate it? Know about it. And I want to tell you something which is important here. You keep on repeating when we have interface dialogue, we are very, very good at this. We know which verses we choose in the Quran to show to the people that we are open. We keep on repeating, we made you nine nations and tribes in order for you to know each other. And in our mind, 90% of the times is to tell the Christians that what is said to them is no us, no about the Muslim. But you misread the Quran. The Quran is to know each other. So when you are in the United States, when we are in Europe, when we are in the West, we need to know about the society. Why? Because there are things in this society that are more Islamic than many things that are in our societies that are majority Muslim countries. So we need to learn and to think. Integrate means understand. Understand means study. Study means take time about the others because the others are part of you when it comes to the fitra this is why uh, some of our scholars were talking about the fitra as the essence of everything which has to do with sharia so the point here is very much to understand it's a way with an open space it's not a closed system this is sharia and this is where we can take everything. Lots of things have been done by scholars and non-Muslims, people of other faiths, that we can take, and it's already sharing. You know, and this is my last point. When I was talking about, uh, yes, uh, when I was, <laughs> very quickly, when I was talking with uh, with people about you know Sharia being implemented in the West, they say, you know, when there is a just law respecting the objective of my religion in the West. This is my Sharia. Sharia doesn't mean it's come from a Muslim mind. It's come from a right principle. So a Muslim mind can produce a wrong principle, and a non-Muslim mind can produce a right principle, a just principle, a fair principle. I take it. I have to study it, and I have to take it. So don't make Sharia a closed system, isolating ourselves from the universality that Islam is promoting from within the axis of La ilaha illallah, the principles of our faith, the skiyat in nafs, reforming the society, understanding the others, taking what is good and promoting in the name of what we think is right. So this is where you understood that at every step of this discussion, our intellects, our minds should be involved. Open heart, deep faith, and clear understanding. This is where every ordinary Muslim should have the basic understanding of this uh, basic things, because this is very basic what we are doing. It's a very introductory speech that you have now to elaborate upon, to study, and to try to promote in your society. Inshallah, Allah, 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 Allah,